hello guys it's israel and welcome back to another mko5 adventure in our last article we covered some important basics of mko5 and i hope you enjoyed the last article but this video is just a summary of what we did in our last article to refresh your memories to prepare you for the one we are about to start in our last article we covered some important topics such as um we covered arrays after arrays we also did custom functions the third topic was preprocessors and lastly we also did um events and new we'll talk about on start uh, the initialization and other event handlers so um we are going to dive into the fascinating world of arrays um now think of an array as a container that can hold multiple pieces of information under one name it's like having a shell where you can store um similar types of item okay let me use an analogy imagine you have different items in your house but you want to store each item in different shelf you might decide that okay in this particular shelf i want to store water in this particular shelf the type of item i want to store are my food stuffs so that is more like the work that array does in um array does in programming so let's look at this um simple example in mko5 Imagine you want to like keep track of close prices of the last five candlesticks. So instead of you creating individual uh, variable for each of these candlesticks, you can use an array instead. So the first step to declaring an array is the um, you have to specify the data type. After specifying the data type, you have to um, give the array a name. And lastly, you have to specify the size in a square bracket. And the size is more like the um, number of elements an array can hold. It's more like saying, okay, in this shelf, I want to store five items. Then the the number of your size, the value of your size will be five. Okay, if you want to store 10 elements, your size will be 10. If you want to store um, 15 elements or 15 items, your um, size will be um will be 15 but in this case our size is five because we are storing five different numbers which is which is our element um in the article i explain um two ways you can assign values to an array assigning during declaration and also assigning after declaration of array but you can read up on that because this is just more like a summary video just to refresh our memories I want you to know that in programming, you start counting um, from from zero. So uh, assigning values to array elements involve storing specific data at a particular index within the array. Each element of the array um, they have a they have a unique index starting from zero, and um, it keeps incrementing by one for each of the subsequent elements. We then assign value to each of the elements by referencing the index within um, the square bracket for for instance um close price zero is equals to one so what i meant by this is that the first element which is 10 is index zero the second element which is 20 is index one the third element which is 30 is index two the fourth element of the array which is 40 is index um, three the fifth element of the array which is 50 is index 4 um, so let's print the code to the console and let's see um, let's see the results after running the code in our meta trader 5 you can see the results here um, this is a very straightforward process i would advise you go through the article before diving into part 4 for better understanding because I don't want you to get lost at any way and you are always free to ask questions and it's, it, it's important for you to note that um, this is just an introduction to array and later in the series we we'll discuss more on some important functions in, in arrays um, you don't need to stress yourself for now and I don't want to feed you with too much information but for now this is just to introduce you to the concept of array we also covered um, custom functions in MQL5. In part of this series, I explained what common functions are. And in part three, I explained the difference between um, common functions and custom functions. So I advise you to um, read up on that. But in summary, 
custom functions in mql file are like a uh, personalized code block that uh, are designed by the user to perform specific um, specific task the syntax for um, creating custom functions in mql5 uh, involves specifying the return type the function name and parameters within the parentheses the parameters within the parentheses are like declaring the variables you'll be working with then okay let me explain what i meant by the return type um let me use this analogy let's say you want to create a function that multiplies two numbers together if you'll be multiplying two integer um variables you have to specify it there that the output of this function is going to be an integer value if the return type is going to be um, a double uh, data type you have to specify it there that um, the function the output of the function is going to be a double data type and it is important for you to note that you cannot create a custom function inside event handler such as the onStart, the uninitialization function or the onTick function they must be created outside of the function though you can call the function inside of this event and last ball you you can you can only define this um common uh, custom functions uh on the in the global space but not uh, but not in the uh event and last so um let's take a look at a simple example in mkl5 um imagine you want to create a function that multiplies two integer variables um here we declared a function named multiply that takes two um, integer parameters you can see them here int param1 and um, int param2 um, the function is expected to um, return an integer so um, inside the curly brackets is the function body where the actual work happens in this case i want to calculate the product of param1 and um, param2 and store uh, store it in a variable called um called um results and so the variable called results i will be returning results uh, which is an integer variable so after creating the function multiply you can um, use the function in any part of your code even inside um event and last and you must note that this is just a summary of what we did in our last article and i will advise you to go through it and um if you have any question you can reach out this is a community and um, we are meant to help each other and become better in mkl5 so uh, we also discussed preprocessors um, preprocessors as the name suggests are like um tools that operate before actual compilation of code it's more like telling your computer hey before you compile i want you to check this out um, we have different categories of preprocessors that are discussed in the article. We have the macro substitution, we have the program properties and all. So I would advise you um, read up on that. An, an example of that is the define preprocessor directive. Like the example here, it's more like telling your computer to replace any uh, anywhere you use magic underscore number with then during the um, code compilation so for example here instead of you are using 10 you can use um magic underscore um, number instead so um you can do different things with processors such as importing code from another file you should you should read the last article for better understanding because this video is just to refresh your memory before going to the next um lastly we also discussed event and last um i want you to to think of an of event and last as like um special functions that respond to specific event or trigger uh, in your trading algorithm for example the antique event and last is trigger whenever there is a new market um, new uh, new price tick let's say the markets move from like uh, 1.333 to 1.335 it means the markets move because the market is constantly moving unless um it's during the weekend that's if you are trading um forex but if you are trading other assets the market is always moving it's more like saying uh, telling your computer okay computer as long, uh, as long as the computer as long as the market keeps ticking or keep moving from one point to another execute this code that is the work of the on -tick function then we have another event handler called uh, on start function the work of the on start function is to um 
perform a to execute a code once and only once we also have initialization which means anytime the um the uh, trading board is initialized should perform a particular function then we have the initialization whenever uh, this might mean whenever the uh the the uh the robot is initialized or maybe um removed from the chart should perform a particular function or execute a particular code all right um traders we've covered a lot of journey together i encourage you to um take a moment to reflect on your progress i uh, remember that every line of code is a victory and um every question you ask is a step to mastery and don't don't be i, I want to encourage you not to be deserting um if things uh, seem uh, complex at times it's just part of coding adventure uh but you just have to keep going keep investing your time more so as we continue you can keep those questions coming they are they are not roadblock they are just a stepping stone don't hesitate to seek for clarity and reach out to me i will help in any way that i can um thank you and happy coding.